Indian Americans were once a small immigrant group in the United States of America and today are emerging as a formidable contributing force in tech companies, in business, in blue or white collar jobs and largely as an immigrant group that has also assimilated into the American society. And that is the reason that Indian Americans are now seen also as a political force. In fact, Indian Americans recently surpassed Chinese Americans to become the largest Asian group in the United States. It's not simply about the numbers, but the contribution to a better American society too, while holding on to their Indian values. From key positions in government to influential roles in both major political parties, their impact clearly today in 2024 is undeniable. And it is visible both in the Republican and the Democrat camps. But how did this community, making up to just about 1.5% of America's population, become so influential and noticeable? Largely skilled Indian professionals, particularly in engineering, medicine and technology, moved to the United States of America over the past 50 years. By 2022, the latest data that we have is that the Indian American population had grown to nearly 4.8 million. This is according to the data from America's uh, Census Bureau. Now, this is about 46% of Indian Americans or 2.2 million individuals who have been eligible to vote because obviously not everyone has the American citizenship and thereby not everyone has voting rights. But amid all of this, about 66% of Indian Americans who are immigrants, 34% likely born in the United States of America itself now. Half of the Indian American population resides in mainly four states, California, Texas, New Jersey, and the New York State. The median household income for Indian Americans in 2022 was reportedly about $145,000. It's significantly higher than the median income of other Asian American groups, which is about $100,000. This is according to the PEW. So how has Indian American community become a political force? I'll take you both to a Democrat and Republican camps to show how more and more faces are coming to the fore. Now, in the Democrat camp, the usual and most obvious would be Kamala Harris, who is hopeful that from the vice president, she could now become the president of the United States of America. But I want to take you behind the curtains also. In the recently concluded Democratic Convention in Chicago, I noticed many Indian American faces emerging as organizers, campaign managers, and even a host of one of these events. Did you notice Mindy Kaling, popular American actress of Indian origin, Mindy was a host at the Democratic National Convention on day three, and she has emerged clearly in support vocally for Kamala Harris, even calling her as a friend. Now, this was specifically after Mindy Kaling and Kamala Harris appeared together in a cooking video during the latter's presidential campaign in 2020. Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, representing Washington's 7th District, is a leading voice in the Democratic Party. Rohana, a key figure in the tech industry, also serves as California's 7th district, representing the heart of Silicon Valley. We're at the Democratic National Convention here in Chicago and we're joined by Indian American Congressman Ro Khanna, who, who's been very involved with this entire process. He was the campaign co-chair for Biden and he's still involved in the Kamala Harris campaign. You're still in the finance uh, I was committee? on the advisory board for President Biden and still on the advisory board for uh, Vice President Harris. Uh, Congressman, just trying to get a feel of it. I mean, we saw both the Obama speak last night. I'm talking to a lot of people. You know, what's your feel on this election? And, you know, I mean, on Kamala Harris's chances to win this election? Well, it was an inspiring speech. Barack Obama talked about an aspirational vision for the country as a cohesive multiracial democracy. And there's no one uh, who's at his league. He's uh, such an inspiring figure. Uh, it is going to be a fight. Uh, we're, we're, we're still the underdog, but we've got a, a, a fighting chance. And the important thing is that we do everything we can uh, to mobilize this country to bring change. Then there is Shreeth Hanedar, Indian origin Democrat. He's otherwise a millionaire. He has been elected to Michigan state legislature in the United States of America. And take a look at this. India Today spoke to Indian Americans who have been actively involved in the Democratic Convention in organizing it at different levels. Today is a historic evening. Kamala Harris will be accepting her nomination for the President of the United States for the Democratic Party. At this moment, uh, today the country will get to know who Kamala Harris is. Let me now take you to the Republican camp. The one person 
who has clearly caught everyone's attention is Usha Shilukuri. The wife of Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, in her own right, is educated, highly established in the professional sphere. She's been a litigator by experience and is also a mother of three children. Nikki Haley, the former governor of South Carolina. Vivek Ramaswamy, a prominent conservative entrepreneur, highlighting the community's influence both in their otherwise professional sphere, but also within the Republican Party. Nominated as a party delegate for the record sixth time, eminent Indian-American physician Dr. Sampat Shivangi has been a lifelong member of the Republican Party. And here's what Dr. Sampat told me when I spoke to him a few weeks ago when the Republican convention was on. Let's listen in to this. Uh, Kamala Harris never claims she is Indian-American. She is uh, African-American, that's what she claims. So I think we are taking a a wrong uh, notion that she's Indian American. Mm. I questioned her a million times, are you Indian American? She would not answer that, uh, that uh, mm. question. So I, I think if she's good, we, 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 anybody can vote for her. I'm not uh, saying that she's a bad person, but look, Trump <clears throat> was successful in four years. Inflation was 30% down in America. Biden presidency has, Inflation went up by 30%. The gas used to get less than $2 a gallon. Now it's $4 a gallon. How, how a poor man, a middle class man can survive? If we look at the bigger picture, five Indian American members of Congress, 40 Indian Americans in state legislature. This is the highest number of the Asian American group in the country, according to AAPI data. While traditionally till now, Majority of Indian American registered voters, which is about 68%, appeared to align or lean towards the Democratic Party. But there's been a change clearly noticed ever since, especially Donald Trump took charge in the previous tenure. And the Trump camp would be banking this time again on the Indian American vote. As I conclude, the fact is, as the Indian American community continues to grow and evolve, so will their influence. The next generation of Indian Americans poised to build on the foundation laid by their predecessors, ensuring that their voices will be heard at every level of American society. From the streets of Silicon Valley to the halls of Congress, Indian Americans are clearly everywhere. And their journey, I'm sure, is just the beginning. They may have divided political opinions clearly between the Republicans and the Democrats, but that's all right. That's a legit choice that everyone has in a democracy. But eventually, it will be about their personal contribution in their professional field that will decide the national contribution and global acknowledgement of the Indian American community. Thank you for watching this episode of Homeland.